Hey everyone, Sean Clement here, Wisdom in Golf. And today, of course, you know, getting really solid distance, you need a lot of different factors. You need to have a centered swing. You need to have a proper low point so that you, ca you catch the ball on the way up and give it the right angle of attack. You need to hit the ball in the center of the face. This is why the one leg drill is an absolute wonder. You'll notice that the speed doesn't diminish. I'm still swinging at 113, 114 miles an hour. And because I'm hitting the ball solid and on the way up, I'm constantly hitting the ball over 300 yards very easily. Before we begin, of course, this kind of valuable information, you want to make sure you're subscribed to our channel. That you leave a comment or a question down below because, you know, you'll want to try this for yourself. And uh, make sure you ring that notification bell so that you don't miss any future videos. All right? So let's get to it. You'll notice that when we get on one leg, if I go with a normal stance here, and then I get on one leg, I'm bringing my foot all the way back until I feel like I'm just on a little bit on the inside of those tiptoes. So you notice what happens is the head comes back. So you're going to be a little closer to the ball than usual. Then you do a couple of practice swings and notice as I'm staying on the inside of that ankle, see how the club passes in the same place? For all of you who have a tendency to dip in the backswing, you're really going to feel it here. So we don't want to load up on the backswing. Notice how the heel's coming off the ground. My center of gravity just went forward. So all of you trying to do something like this in the backswing, you're going to have to have some serious jumping up to do in the downswing. So you'll notice if I swing back and through without stopping, Look at how my center of gravity stays on the inside of my left ankle. So we're keeping the weight right in here through the glute and the quad. So I'm feeling really solid over that leg. Now it's okay for it to come up a little bit because as your hips turn, half your knee is your femur, your femur is your hip. So we want to allow that leg to extend a little bit so that you can get full range of motion in that backswing. Sorry, I hit my mic there. So my whole backside needs to be facing the target at the top of my backswing. Now I've got some really solid range of motion that I can really whip the club with. Now, how does that whipping action work? It very much resembles a hammer throw in the Olympics. So this is that big, you know, steel ball at the end of the chain and we're whistling that ball on a string around that center. The center of the machine is right here, right between your clavicles, called the, the sternal notch. And this is what everything revolves around. So if you look at the hammer throwers, you'll notice everything connects here and everything is centered around that sternal notch. And they're just turning with it out of pure self-preservation. It's a pretty cool picture, isn't it? So now, I'm going to do my dismount, so I'm already in my pre-dismount mode, and I'm gathering. And you see how my right leg is used not only for ballast, but I'm actually using the ground with the inside of my right foot to remove my rib cage and pelvis out of the way. So my pelvis right now is swinging around my left hip, very much like a soccer player coming in for a, for a good kick. Once that foot's planted, the other leg is swinging around this pivot point. So, my sternal notch is braced up against the inside of that foot, and I'm holding that sternal notch in place from the inside of the right up against the inside of the left. So, if your ball position's too far forward, you got to go after it, you're going to lose your balance. If it's too far back, you're going to have to reach back. You're going to lose your balance. So you want to feel like you could just swing back and through. See that? 
now that I have a bolted center, this can stay in place. Now I know where the low point's gonna be. So all I gotta do now is look at where the club is bottoming out. So there's my center. So if I wanna catch the ball on the way up, I gotta put my center here. Now it feels like I got the tip of the tee on the way up in the direction of my intermediate point. So now I'm gonna feel that weight dynamically in that G-force and I'm just gonna twirl it right through the tip of the tee in that direction. Here we go. That is a beauty. So 113 miles an hour. 297. 297 carry. I got 280 carry here on the on the GC quad. Okay. And it's it's given us like 109 miles an hour there. Yeah. So not too shabby. Either one of these is going to give me well over 300 yards. So at that 1800 spin rate and my launch yeah, the launch angle there was about 10 and a half. That's going to give me the roll I need to get over 300 yards. Piece of cake. Let's try one more. So if I'm going feet apart it will look like this on one leg it looks like this see that notice my center gravity came this way so now I got to get closer there we go and now we're gonna give it some solid momentum through there so I'm gonna gather and whip the tip of the T in that direction bombs away bombs away 114 miles an hour see that was 284 carry yeah 1900 spin that's well over 300 yards exactly yeah. so let's you finally do one more oh yeah 114, 282 carry, 1900 spin. We're all set, man. Oh, man, 114 miles an hour. That one didn't register. For didn't register, too no. bad, because this one here is 290 carry at 2000 spin. That well, was 320. Easily, easy. yeah. Oh man, I can't wait to go play now. <laughs> Sav, be careful. I'm two up on a match with Sav right now and I gotta go, I gotta go finish the deal. I'm not worried. <laughs> she says she's not worried. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed that and you know, stay tuned for our next video. You know it's gonna be good.